Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wolf Pit. In today's video, we're doing several different things. But before we get started, if you're playing the Wolf Pit drinking game, the word of the day is Fire Disc. Take a drink of your favorite beverage every time I say Fire Disc. There's your first drink. Now, we're going to make a very simple, budget-friendly, and very delicious meal of hamburger hash. I'm also going to show you how to season a carbon steel wok. Well, technically it's not a wok. But to me, it's close enough to a wok that I'm going to call it a wok, even though it's not a wok. And now you're wondering what I'm calling a wok that isn't really a wok, but it's close enough to a wok for me to call it a wok. Are you as confused right now as I am? Well, the thing that's like a wok, but not really a wok, that I call a wok, is a fire disc cooker. And before we go any further, I'd like to thank Fire Disc for sponsoring today's video. Now I know what you're saying, isn't this just a discotter cooker? Well not exactly, but Fire Disc has discotter cookers as well. But today, I'll be seasoning and cooking the 36 inch tall, 22 inch diameter Fire Disc. It's made of ultra high carbon steel, which is the same material good traditional woks are made from. If you want to learn more about the Fire Disc, there's a link and a coupon code in the description of this video. And there's a whole lot of other features if you'd like to hit pause and read them all. Let's quickly go over the Fire Disc, and I'd like to point out one thing first. The pictures or videos don't do the Fire Disc justice. This thing is very, very well built and heavy duty, and the thickness will really be an asset while cooking and holding heat. And it might look like it's going to be unsteady sitting at 3 feet high with a heavy disc on top, but it's very stable. The Fire Disc and the stand that I'm using today weighs 60 pounds. This is definitely not some Walmart special. Not that there's anything wrong with Walmart. It uses propane, which you can use the small bottles, which I happen to have a few of the small bottles laying around in the shed, so that's what I'll be using today. But Fire Disc also makes a converter for the 20 pound bottles. The Fire Disc is very portable, but plan on spending some time disassembling and reassembling when transporting it. My buddy Kevin is here to show you the process, and make sure you pay close attention to all the steps involved to make it simpler for yourselves. You simply remove the fire disc and slide the legs apart. And you repeat the same process to reassemble. That's it. It doesn't get any simpler or easier than that. I thought I'd have a little bit of fun with Kevin, and I told him to act like he's cooking with a Fire Disc Ultimate Frying Weapon while he's sporting the Fire Disc Cowboy hat and enjoying a frosty cold beverage out of the Fire Disc Koozie. I'm not kidding, it really is called the Ultimate Frying Weapon, and for good reason. You could use this as a home defense weapon to shovel snow or to dig a foxhole, and it even has a built-in bottle opener for your favorite beverage. Fire Disc also sent a bunch of their seasonings, which I'll be trying in the future. And finally, they have a nice looking, heavy duty cover, but it's poorly functioning. Why is it poorly functioning? Because it's not waterproof. Well, at least the one I got isn't, which is very disappointing. What good is a cover if it's not waterproof? Especially when you're dealing with carbon steel, which if you're not familiar with carbon steel and you don't take care of it, it will rust. I received the fire disc right before we went out of town on vacation. So we put it together and put the 20 pound converter inside the fire disc and then covered it up. When we came back a week later, it was full of water, and it stained the carbon steel and had a little bit of rust on it. But after washing it up real good, we got rid of the little bit of surface rust. And you can see where the water stained it and the outline of the packaging for the 20 pound propane converter. But we're going to take care of most of this right now. After we washed the fire disc, we dried it real good, and then we put it onto the burner and turned it on high. As the fire disc continues to heat, you'll notice it's starting to discolor or get a patina to it. This is perfectly normal. I see a lot of people only season the bottoms of their woks, and I've seen people do the same thing on the fire disc, which means only the bottom of your wok or fire disc is going to be seasoned, non-stick, and protected. But I'm going to take it a step further and season as much surface area as I can. 
I want as little stickage as possible, and I want the fire disc to last forever. Now I've sped up the video quite a bit. This whole process took about 30 minutes, and I can't put you, the people, through 30 minutes of watching steel change colors. Now once the patina stops expanding in the circle, tilt another section of the fire disc to where it's directly over the flame. And continue this process until all the surface area has patina. Now once you have as much surface area done on the fire disc that you can, means all the pores are opened up with the steel and you're ready to add some oil. I use canola oil and the type of oil you use doesn't really make a difference as long as it has a smoke point of 400 degrees or above. But just remember the fire disc is extremely hot and there's always a chance that the oil could flame up. So just be careful at this point. You don't want to end up like Freddy. Ah, boogeyman! But just in case, I let Mrs. Wolfpit do the honors. and you want to continue wiping until all the excess oil is absorbed in the paper towels. And then turn the heat off and give it one more coating of oil. And now we're finally ready to cook and make our hamburger hash. Now add about an inch of oil over medium heat and let it preheat to 350 degrees. Then give the oil a good swirl to coat the fire disc. Once the oil is up to 350 degrees, we added our quartered up baby yellow potatoes. Now spread them out evenly. And just leave them there and let them fry for about four minutes. After about four minutes, give them a flip. Spread them back out into an even layer and let them go for four more minutes. And then after a total of eight minutes, our potatoes are nice and golden brown and cooked through. Now slide them up the fire disc and out of the oil. And then remove most of the excess oil in one scoop with the magic Chinese ladle. Now add some 80-20 ground chuck. And then break it up and cook it until it's all browned. The hamburger hash was Mrs. Wolf Pit's idea, which I've never had before. Which at this point, I was thinking you could add whatever meat you want in it. Of course it wouldn't be hamburger hash then, it would be whatever kind of meat you added to it hash. And if you're vegan or vegetarian, add tofu. What sounds better than a big old plate of tofu hash? Once all the ground beef is browned, slide it up the fire disc with the potatoes. And if you think about it, the fire disc is pretty healthy to cook on. Once you slide the meat or the fried foods up to the sides, gravity takes over and removes all the grease. I bet I know what you guys are thinking. Why haven't I seasoned the food yet? Patience my people, patience. I haven't forgotten, it's coming up. Now remove most of the grease from the ground beef.
and then add some chopped yellow onion and some green and red bell pepper. Spread it out and let it cook for about a minute. I like my vegetables tender crisp, so I don't cook them very long. If you want your vegetables softer, cook them for a little bit longer. Then after a minute, give it a flip. And then we mix everything together. And then once everything's all mixed together and happy happy, spread it out into a nice even layer. And now we're going to season it. And I'm going to season it with this Morton's all-purpose seasoning, which is Himalayan pink salt, black pepper, and garlic. I've shown you this before in other videos because I absolutely love the stuff. I put it on everything. Now turn the heat off and give it a mix. And now the only thing left to do is to plate it up and give it a try. And would you look at that? Absolutely no stickage on the fire disc. And here's our finished hamburger hash. And Mrs. Wolf Pitt and I both gave it a try and we both really enjoyed it. The potatoes were fantastic. They were nice and crisp and tender in the middle. But that's where Mrs. Wolf Pitt's opinion and mine differed. Well, at first we differed, but then she explained Hash doesn't have crispy fried potatoes in it. It has softer, mushier potatoes. And the hash she wanted to have was a little bit more moist and not as loose. And I was thinking, what has she been drinking? She's gone Looney Tunes. Who in their right mind doesn't like crispy fried potatoes? But then after eating it for a few minutes, although what we made was absolutely delicious, I understood what she meant. I think we could have gotten the texture she wanted if we sauteed the potatoes and vegetables together instead of frying the potatoes first. But like I said, it still turned out absolutely delicious. But the possibilities you can do with this are endless. You can add all sorts of vegetables, especially mushrooms would be great in it. You can add different kinds of meat, or even tofu if you're so inclined, or add scrambled eggs to it, or fried egg on top. And let's not forget about cheese. Cheese will be great in this. The possibilities are only limited by your imagination. Thank you all very much for watching. If you're not subscribed, remember to hit the subscribe button, like this video, and share it with your family and friends, and I'll see you soon.